What's up, everybody? It is Thursday night. We're coming at you live with a little fun episode here. Fantasy football talk. We've got a lot. You know, we haven't done one of these live yet. We've we've done these, we've recorded them, and then we've put them on the channels and whatnot. We're doing this live because if you do have some fantasy football questions, we have a resident expert with us, Derek Davis, also known to many on Twitter as the Orange Arrow, and of course, his own fantasy football channel george orange arrow fantasy show uh derek what's going on man thursday night i know a lot of people are watching some football maybe they're catching this while uh while watching the texans take on the panthers right so um yeah the the carol the carolina christian mccaffrey's yeah yeah (laughs) precisely so for those who haven't seen one of these episodes quite yet, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through some best plays, some best bets for survival, uh, for, you know, obviously your fantasy football teams. Uh, I, I've i kind of made myself a cautionary tale here because I think through two weeks, I'm one in five in three different leagues. So that's that's just absolutely lovely. But I am still alive in my survival pool, whatever. So if you have questions... Uh, by the way, hello. I'm seeing a lot of hellos. From some Have some fantasy football questions. Submit them in the live chats. And we'll get those. We'll try and get to a couple of those as well. But this is my upcoming uh, plays here. Dak Prescott, Leonard Fournette. I had to make some adjustments. Miles Sanders, Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, DJ Chark, Travis Kelsey, Justin Jefferson, uh, Henderson from the Rams, Myers, the kicker from Seattle, and I do have the Pittsburgh defense. What's sticking out to you there is good plays or bad plays this coming week here? Yeah, um, the number one thing that I see is, is Leonard Fournette right there, and, and he he's kind of had a little bit of a slow start, but the one thing that I noticed when watching the Tampa Bay game is – the number one thing we thought was going to happen was when they brought Giovanni Bernard in, I thought for sure he was going to be the, um, the, the pass catching back for Tom Brady, you know, his, his, uh, Devin white or not Devin white, um, James James white. That's it. His, the James white of, of Tom Brady and, and the Patriots, but Leonard Fournette's kind of been, been the pass catching back more or less. And I know you don't really think of Fournette, as being that, but he's got he's gotten quite a few uh, quite a few receptions, and, and it looks like his role starting to expand with with Ronald Jones being a little more um, kind of taking the backseat a little bit, and, and really Geo isn't getting much run at all. He is not so, and there was a I, I've got according to the sleep wrap, I've got a forty two percent chance of winning. Uh, and on my bench here, I'll show you the bench players here. Now I'm tempted to go back with Josh Allen after the Dak Prescott game last week. Uh, so we'll see who I, I, you know, I've got Johnson from Houston. Obviously I'm sitting him tonight. Jacobs, who was out last week. I don't know if I want to take a chance there. Claypool. I already have Smith Schuster in the lineup, Claypool, and then Gasecki on the, on the bench. There. So I don't know if there's anything there that, strikes you as you know one where you say hey anthony may want to think that i'm I'm really contemplating josh allen this week though over dak yeah um right now let me just take a look here so right now as far as as far as the uh expert consensus ranks on quarterbacks um they have josh allen as qb5 and then dak prescott as qb6 so Right there kind of gives you your idea that, you know, you're going back and forth. It, it seems like all the quote-unquote experts are kind of in lockstep with you. But, yeah. you know, Josh Allen, it, they're kind of – they kind of have the similar style play with with, with Josh and, and Dak. You know, they, they both have that athletic ability to get out and run, and they're both kind of – that you know, that kind of person. So, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a dual thread. So I'll have to think on that one. I've got a little time potentially there, but uh, should be, it looks like it's coming up to a, at least a little bit of an even matchup for me this week in our uh, charity league real quick before I, I embarrass myself further by showing what happened in one of my other leagues. Uh, we've got a uh, a call on the line here for you. And hopefully there is a fantasy football question going for, 
for Derek here. I think we've got Eric on the line. Is that correct? Yeah, it's Eric. Hey, what's going on, man? You got a fantasy football question for uh, the Orange Arrow here? What's going on, Eric? Um, it's not really a fantasy football um, question per se. It's I happened to catch it live, and I had a question for you. Okay. Your show a lot. Okay. Um. So I'm very familiar with uh, some of the Bengals. I'm friends with some of the uh, players, and I know a lot of people that that know a lot of the players. And I actually played with some of the people that are on the Bengals team currently. Okay. And so there's apparently some turmoil within um, within certain groups of the Bengals players, right? And. I was wondering what your take on that is, uh, given the situation with Burrow being hit so much. Well, I, I don't know specifically what turmoil you might be speaking of, Eric, but um, you know, I, I think the the issue it, it depends on on what we're talking about here, right? I mean, it's kind of like are, are we talking about the Bengals maybe not allocating all of the kinds of resources like we saw in Kansas City? do on their offensive line and that's that's kind of resonating within that locker room and then you're seeing Joe Burrow now credited with 10 sacks in two games I guess there was a sack that was credited to Robert Quinn on a no game play that one where there was a um, a roughing the passer thing at the end of the end of the play he actually got a sack on that but it kind of depends on what what you might be referring to obviously the offensive line is not playing uh, at, at quite the level that we would like it to they did okay especially the tackles in week one but they're having problems picking up blitzes it would seem they're having problems still identifying stunts and and how to give off certain certain players to other linemen and and the assignments that are there the the other issue and maybe we wouldn't be talking about this as much eric if you know I got something on my Facebook page today from uh, a, a listener and reader, great guy. And it was a, a, some article about Penny Sewell and how the Bengals are going to rue the day still that they, you know, and my retort was, well, I mean, Jamar Chase is making his plays too. So maybe those are picks that just happen to work out for both teams. The issue though, Eric, I think, and Derek, if you want to chime in as well too, I'll let you, but I think the issue here is the, uh, the main offensive lineman, the high pick offensive lineman that the Bengals invested in has been sitting on the bench and at one point was a third string guard in the preseason for this team. And that's not sitting well with a lot of people. He may get his shot this week because right. Xavier Suofilo didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. So he may, uh, Jackson Carmen may get his shot this week. Maybe he's just one of those guys who's a gamer and uh, you know, there's been stuff about weight issues and all that kind of stuff, but maybe he's just a gamer and that's that's going to follow him from playing at a big time program in Clemson, and he played at a high level there. I don't know, but uh, you know th- yeah, those are just kind of. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I can't misrepresent myself when I when I uh, ask the question. Um, it's, it's when I said like turmoil, um, I think there's just major concern within the line, mm-hmm. and you know I know that he's got the line in of itself as the problem there. Yeah. But that, you know, just kind of sloppy overall. But the thing that I think some of my friends that are connected to the Bengals are concerned about is the fact that, you know, we do have kind of a beat up um, offense when you have a center who's coming off of an injury. You have a newer guy that's within the organization. You have backups that are kind of just, you know, you know, they're, they're kind of second, third string, maybe kind of guys. Yeah, they're not pushing for starting spots type of thing. Is that what, is kind of what you're t- saying, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it's it's unfortunate because it's going to be a narrative until it's not, right? I mean, it, it's it, this, this right. is going to be an issue until – they can prove otherwise. I, I think I wrote this in in something uh, recently on Cincy Jungle, but essentially the Bengals put all their eggs in the Frank Pollock and draft baskets. Yeah, they, they brought in Quentin Spain. Yeah, they brought in Riley Reef, but they had other opportunities out there to get the more premier talent on the interior of the line. I think they felt that Trey Hopkins, and, and I mean, to his credit, Trey Hopkins has seemingly worked his butt off to come back. 
Um, I, I think they they thought he was maybe going to be in a little bit uh, uh, in a little bit better. I don't want to say shape because I don't think it's a conditioning issue. I just think that he was maybe going to be a little further along than he is right now. And it is a borderline miracle that he's out there starting really how late he had that knee injury last year. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of different, uh, different things. And unfortunately some of the things that they have placed their bets in this year, not really come to fruition at this point. So uh, at this point, I think we have to rely on the, the Frank Pollock, his impact being felt later in the year and these guys, some of the newer faces, a guy like Quentin Spain who played only half a year with the team last year, some of these guys gelling and it kind of coming together a little bit later in the season. And then maybe you bring in a Jackson Carmen and he's a guy that can help boost your offensive line play as a young guy. Sure. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you go after this one statement. Um, and I really greatly appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is kind of concerning, though, when you hear, um, you know, a, around this area, because I, I actually live in Cincinnati here. Um, it's concerning when you hear somebody like Joe Tooney's sister, you know, say that the Bengals, you know, low-balled him so bad that he didn't even take it into consideration. And then he was very disappointed in the fact that, you know, he couldn't come back basically home. And in... You know, we, we like to, to spread this new narrative of a new day and a new uh, way of looking at things with the Bengals and Mike Brown kind of stepping down, these kinds of things. But it's still kind of concerning when you hear reports about things like that. And I just kind of wanted to get your thought on that before uh, I hop off or hop off and let you look. Yeah, you know, I, I um, you know, I just think, and, and Derek, I, I definitely want to hear from you on this too when we, when we, uh, continue on here but I just think this is a team that just does not value has not traditionally valued the guard position in terms of what it pays those players Um, we've already seen that that safety is also one of those positions that they just do not value guaranteed money in big contracts is a sticking point with the Bengals it always has been Um, so they're going to need to kind of change change their tune or they're going to need to strike gold in the draft if they continue to you know, hit the, you know, draft these interior offensive linemen. I think Deontay Smith has a bright future for this team, but he's a developmental guy. Carmen's probably a bit of the same, but, uh, you know, I think, unfortunately, the Bengals just do not value the guard position. You saw you saw them let Eric Steinbach walk, a guy who was a borderline Pro Bowl player. They let Kevin Zeitler walk. And supposedly didn't even really offer him a substantial contract. And so, you know, two of those guys were, I mean, Steinbach was basically a first round pick with the top pick in the second round. And Zeitler was a first round pick. They let him go after their rookie contracts and, uh, you know, they kind of went elsewhere. They, they got, uh, they paid good money for Bobby Williams, but you know, not what they probably would have paid Eric Steinbach. Like a new, a new quote unquote new day situation. You think that those kinds of things would kind of change, right? Yeah, you would think, but, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the organization does have certain mindsets on things. And even with a lot of different changes, sometimes their player evaluations, positional evaluations and all of that, they kind of have some biases on that, it would seem, unfortunately. And uh, 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 at- quick, um, if you haven't checked out uh, what Lance uh, McAllister had to say about the Bengals, if you haven't, uh, other than that, uh, two day, you know, I hope we win this uh this Sunday against the Steelers. And uh, I really look forward to watching the rest of your guys' program. So Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Take it easy, bud. And, uh, Absolutely, bud. Uh, Derek, you kind of had some thoughts there as well. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, just... I kind of talked my, talked my head off there. I apologize. <laughs> no, that's all right. I was just, I was going to say, adding on to that. Um, and I just, I did a quick search real quick. Cause I, I, I started wondering about it and I, on on uh, spot track or spot track, however you want to say that, I, I wanted to look to see kind of what um, where where the the pay the pay for for a guard is right now. And Joe Tooney got you know the five year eighty million. There's actually one guard above him right now, and that's Zach Martin, and he got a six year eighty four. So it's actually 
less per year, but it's still it's a bigger overall contract. Yeah. Right. Right. And then right below the one right below and or be, below Tooney is Andrew Norwell. And he got a five year, 66 and a half million. So what I want to know what the definition of low bald is. You, you know what I mean? You know, if, if, Kansas City was offering him five years 80, and the Bengals went out and looked at all of these these wages, and Andrew Norwell is 66 and a half. Uh, Andrus P is 57 and a half. Brandon Brooks is 56 and, and 56 and 50. Maybe they offered him six, you know, five years 60, and he's like, man, they're 20 million dollars lower than KC they're low low balling me you know know what I mean and that's actually right there so yeah that, I, I, I just have my thoughts on that yeah I think I, th- I just think the guaranteed money just seems to be a sticking point with this team yeah. the Bengals don't like to put themselves in bad spots credit them in some regard because they are never in salary cap issues they never have salary cap issues where they have to you know purge a lot of good players from the roster or restructure a bunch of stuff. But at the same time, they've traditionally held on to some players a little longer than they should have because they're team friendly contracts. They uh, lose out on some free agents. So the other thing is too, is they've really made a commitment to the interior of the defensive line. So they've, Mm -hmm. they've, uh, you know, in free agency, they've really committed to that rush getting after the passer. And we've started to see the fruits of that labor. Maybe we're still one off season away Maybe they thought they could get more out of some of these young guys and, uh, you know, a, a Xavier Suofilo, a, a Trey Hopkins coming back from injury than what they're giving them. It's not, to Eric's point, though, it's not just the interior of the offensive line. The tackles had some issues last week. The backs are having problems picking up blitzers. Um, you know, Drew Sample has had some low PFF pass blocking scores. So it's kind of a by committee issue. Um, that seems to be taking place. But thanks thanks for calling, Eric. Um, we're we're going to talk a little more fantasy football. Of course, we always love to talk Bengals in general, but we're going to talk a little more fantasy football here. And, of course, we've already got, a, a, I think, a question or two. If you have some questions, leave them in the live chat or get in touch with us, and we will address those as we can. Here we go. I'm going to embarrass myself here. This was my <laughs> result from last week, Derek. As you can mm-hmm. see, our very own Joe Burrow was kind of the big – issue there um at least for a lack of big plays for me but then of course he got 22 points off of his defense so that was kind of like okay thanks a bunch um and then (laughs) you you hear the wide receiver wide receiver running back running back that he played there i mean you know they just uh, mccaffrey and carson killed it lockett had a gigantic game dj moore had a big game so staff you went up against a gauntlet I did. I did. And I got smoked. So, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I've kind of made, uh, you know, when you have Swift and Chubb, you kind of feel like, well, maybe you got a, a decent chance there. Unfortunately, Swift didn't do as much as I had hoped in the Monday night mm-hmm. game either. Uh, Claypool, a little bit disappointing, but I, I'm sticking with uh, quite a few that I also sat, unfortunately, a big one here. You see DJ Chark 2.4 and I had mm-hmm. said, show the bench players unfortunately i debated between he and marvin jones and that was a bad play by me oh yeah so uh that one that one hurt me a little bit but even still i mean i'm like 55 points 50 53 points away from this guy so that was uh, that was an issue i don't know if you see any of these guys i've got most of these guys coming in next week i may have made the change to Jones next week for Chark. But, um, you know, if you see anything here, I know there's a questionable thing with DeAndre Swift. Uh, anything jumping out out to you there? Now, I will say Jacksonville going up against Arizona, um, you know, that was a high-scoring game, Arizona and, and Minnesota last week. Yeah. So you might, you might pull him out this week and then end up – but, I mean – See, it's really hard when you're trying to choose between two players on the same team, too, because, you know, I'm not really sure who exactly is his um, his first look because I haven't really uh, got to watch a lot of tape on them yet. But it, it seems to me like Marvin Jones might be the one he's more comfortable with. So so maybe you do go go with uh, Marvin Jones there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think I think that's where I'm where I'm leaning, and I may have already done that. I got to double check the line up there, but unfortunately, just uh, a lot of letdowns on my on my roster, and just a gauntlet of uh, you know running backs, wide receivers from the opponent, and of course the big 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 performance from the Buffalo defense and special teams in the shutout in Miami there. So thanks a bunch, Buffalo. Thank you so, much. so excited. Uh, so let's. Let's go with this one right here. Um, this is – let's go to the question. Let's go to the question from Brooks in YouTube here because we're going to transition into what week three is looking like. Brooks7070 says, I need a wide receiver three. I have Ayuk, T. Higgins, and Jarvis Landry. Who do I start? Well, as Tanya Noah noted in the live YouTube chat, they just put Jarvis Landry on IR. Um, so that's mm-hmm. probably not going to be a guy you want to play. So it comes down to – Higgins. Higgins didn't practice Thursday, which is not a good sign. Um, I did see a little video clip from our buddies, uh, Strawberry Ice and whatnot on Twitter, where they were interacting with T, and he seemed to be in He seemed to be all right in that, yeah. And they were saying, you know, we need you to suit up Friday and get better. And he said, yes, sir, I think, as he was walking away. You know, take that for what you will, but that is something to kind of keep in mind. If Higgins plays, I think that's the play. But yeah. the injury issue to me is is what what's muddying this water here. But take Jarvis Landry out of the equation. Yeah, here's here's exactly what I would do in that position. Number one, if you have an IR spot, put Jarvis in your IR and let him sit there. That that will give you more flexibility as far as your your um, bench goes. Number two. You start T. Higgins over IU. IU scares me right now. He he hasn't done hardly anything for for San Fran. So until until I see it, and I I can't just see it one week and be like, okay, he's fine. Put him in my lineup. So I want to kind of do two. Give me about two weeks, and then of course I'll say give me two weeks, and then he'll do two good <laughs> weeks, and I'll put him in my lineup, and <laughs> and then he'll you know he'll have a bomb week. But I need to see about two weeks before I can trust him again. Yeah. So T Higgins for sure, and then if T doesn't play, hopefully you've got uh, somebody on your bench that you could possibly um, drop and or pick somebody up off the waiver wire. I'm not sure what what the wire looks like right now, but the the Niners receivers are always tricky for me in that offense. I mean, they can put up some numbers here and there. They're a run heavy team. Um, you know, you've got another guy who's you know a guy they like in Debo Samuel, but Samuel like runs the ball. Uh, often so i mean it's like it's kind of like they, they give them a lot on like pitches and you know reverses and stuff yeah uh and then you know you've got a talented guy but unfortunately you know it's kind of just like you said it's real feast or famine with those guys so i would be where playing Ayuk, but that would probably be the play you got to monitor what happens to, to higgins on uh friday if he practices um and, and see what see what happens there he may be a game time decision there i think he plays mm-hmm. but at this point it's still up in the air uh, but good question there brooks let's go to this is a i wanted to share this one this is on cincy jungle this is from our, our friend patrick judas i believe this is the week three fantasy football starts and sits article on cincyjungle.com. And I wanted to get your take on some of this because it's not just Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, this is a guy I've tried to get my hands on. I tried to get my hands on him in week one and he got scooped up real quick. Tyson Williams or Tyson Williams from Baltimore mm-hmm. um, and Chase Edmonds of Arizona. What do you think about those two plays there? Yeah, right now, um, Tyson's looking good, and then of course you know he's got he's got the matchup against Detroit, who is not looking good right now. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. They're for some reason for Dan Campbell, man. They're they're coming to fight each and every game. But but Tyson, the only issue that I have with him right now is it doesn't seem you know he's had a couple fumbles. He had that one at the goal line, and it seems like they're starting to pull it like those, those goal line touches, those red zone touches away from him and give them, you know, to um, Lat Murray. And, and that worries me a little bit, but as long as he, he doesn't fumble the ball, I'd say Tyson would be a, a great, great start this week. Okay. And Chase Edmonds, you're saying, you know, Arizona has been putting up some points, but a lot of those mm-hmm. points come from, uh, you know, Kyler Murray's, arm or him him mm-hmm. doing Kyler Murray things 
what do you think about the Edmonds start here? Uh, as yeah. Must start this week? Um, I mean, here's the thing with, with that game. I, that game kind of scares me a little bit as far as the, you've seen Arizona's defense get absolutely torched by Kirk Cousins. And I know he's a still a rookie, but I think that Trevor Lawrence has a, the chance to potentially be better than Kirk Cousins. So I could see them potentially falling behind in this one. I know that's weird. It's Jacksonville. But if Arizona ends up being behind, I could see them having to throw a lot more, and they, that would mean – leaning more away from the running backs and leaning more towards Kyler Murray and the passing game. So that's just one of my little, like, I know I'm crazy takes, but I I think there's a very good potential for that being a trap game. Okay. And then wide receiver, he's got Devontae Smith and KJ Osborne from Minnesota. Uh, Smith, really, it's not so much about Smith, though. He he was a high pick. It's more the fact that the Cowboys have allowed an average of more than 30 fantasy points per game so far to wide receivers this season. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that resonates with you, but that, that obviously is something to think about. It is a divisional game, and teams kind of play each other tougher in those usually. So what do you, what do you make yeah. of those two plays there? So Devonta, I, I've been really impressed with Devonta, and – you know, I've I've always been Jamar Chase from from go, but I also didn't think Devonta was that bad. I worried a little bit about his his the size the the size, yes, the the slide of frame, and I think I f- I forget who it was, but some one of the podcasts and stuff that I listened to was talking about is this are we in a different type of NFL right now to where the the size weight speed you know all that stuff isn't necessarily a knock anymore if it's a guy's talented the guy's talented because you know you're seeing these guys that like the Tyreek Hill he doesn't have the size but yet he's got the speed you know and then you've got guys like um like Kyler Murray and everybody was like well he's too short well look what he's doing in the NFL right now you know and it it almost seems like the NFL has evolved away from that, and that that kind of thing isn't really necessarily an issue anymore. I think there's just a lot of bright offensive minds, and even if you, you get a talented wide receiver that isn't the prototypical Calvin Johnson build, you can still mm-hmm. get a lot of production based on that you draw up, and I think that's probably where Devontae Smith is. I mean, he's, he's a talented guy. We know that, but he, you know, he's, he's definitely slight in build, so – um, you know, that's that's something that uh, is probably he's he's benefiting from. Interestingly enough, uh, we have the Bengals defense as a as a must play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that has to do with the Steelers offensive line. Um, so I don't know if you have some specific thoughts about that. I, you know, I, I know there's a supposedly declining Ben Roethlisberger, the offensive line issue. Steelers didn't put up a ton of points last week, um, maybe even a uh pop off of a return, a bounce back game from Darius Phillips and or Brandon Wilson in the return game. Who knows? But uh, that was one I, th- I found interesting. Yeah. Sacks, sacks and more sacks. Yeah. That's what, now I will say big Ben is like the freaking Eiffel tower. I mean, it's hard to get this guy to go down. And so maybe they won't have as many sacks as we think they're going to get. But you put pressure in the guy's sack in the guy's face, and that's going to going to amount to turnovers as well. Because he's one of those guys where he'll just chuck the ball up in the air before he'll almost let somebody take a sack. So if hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, we get Trey Wayne's back and kind of solidify that that D, the DBs as well, and that'll lead to some more turnovers. And maybe my guy, like I showed you. Got the jersey on. Logan Wilson will be able to pick him off again. I like it. So one of the sits is Joe Mixon, and I wanted to get your specific taste take on this because that's always hard to do because I assume that Joe Mixon is at bare minimum a flex player in almost every league, if not RB2, maybe even RB1 for some teams, right? So, um, you know, when you, when you see him – 
on a sit list because of playing the Steelers and the Steelers have, being stout on defense, particularly against running backs. I, how does that, how do, pardon the pun, how does that sit with you? That, that <laughs> Because it's kind of like, man, you know, you're telling me to sit arguably one of a guy who is the number two running, you know, he has the, the second most yards rushing in the league right now. Mm-hmm. And the advice is to sit him just simply because of the matchup. Do you, do you believe in sitting it, sitting him because of a perceived bad matchup? Or do you say we got to ride with this guy? He's a high pick and he's one of the most productive running backs in the league from a fantasy standpoint at this point in time. Yeah. So number one, this is like, like you and I talked about before on previous shows, sometimes sit more or less means temper your expectations. And a lot of times people will look at this and, and be like, I'll sit Joe Mixon and they'll take him completely out of their lineup. And that's, that's why I always hate that word sit because absolutely Joe Mixon will not finish outside the top 24 and running backs. And normally if you're within the top 24, you're either an RB one or an RB two, obviously, because you, you know, normally most cases, 12 team um, and you start two running backs. So, I wouldn't sit Joe Mixon. You started, you picked him in the second round. Some people picked him in the first round for a reason. He's currently right now, he is sitting at running back nine, just below Najee Harris, which is actually my quote unquote sit of the week. So no, absolutely do not sit Joe Mixon. Okay. All right. Well, a little bit of a discrepancy there. We like that. We like differing opinions on this. We're going to be here a few more minutes giving you some fantasy football advice from the Orange Arrow, a.k.a. Derek Davis. Before we get into some of his own picks, we've been using the Cincy Jungle picks and others, some other players that he wants to point out. We have to tell you about our partnership with Symbol, S-I-M-B-U-L-L, the website, symbol.app forward slash OBI. We will put that in the live chats with Symbol. You can invest in teams, whether it's the Cincinnati Bengals, another NFL team, or other sports. All of those are available. You can do that. At any point, go to S-I-M-B-U-L-L dot A-P-P backslash O-B-I. It is in the live chats. And if you go in there and sign up with the promo code O-B-I, you can get a free week of Symbol Gold. So go take advantage of that when you can. All right. So uh, what are some additional we, – we talked a little bit about, you know, some of the plays and your thoughts on some of those uh, on the article on CincyJungle.com. Where, where are you – what are maybe just a couple more of – Hey, player, beware of these and or, hey, you know, this is a sneaky good play this week. Yeah. So um, first, real quick, DJ Moore has nine targets, six receptions, and I just I wasn't fast enough. I didn't get to see it. Yeah, he's he is. Sam Darnold is hyper targeting DJ Moore right now. But (laughs) anyway, and then Christian McCaffrey doing Christian McCaffrey things. But anyway. Um, a couple guys that I that I talked about on my show in um, quarterback Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Cortland Sutton, and Melvin Gordon. All three of those guys were in my stars of the week for Denver, just because I think that Denver is going to kind of run away with this. You'll notice later when we talk about survival picks, where I'm kind of leaning there as well. But Teddy, he. Teddy two gloves, man. He he looked pretty good last week, and I I kind of look for him to to kind of continue that. Okay, uh, and so those are your consider playing this week or consider starting this week. Bridgewater is always a tricky one, man. He's always a right. tricky one because sometimes right. he's the game manager, and other times he has a, a real nice game out of you know, and you kind of go, oh man, I I missed out on that one. Uh, who are some of the ones to beware of this week? Yeah, and um, real quick, Teddy is actually ranked as um, quarterback 13 on the week. So um, I I could definitely see him finishing in the top 12. Um, and then Melvin Gordon, he's all the way down in the um, running back 26. And then Cortland Sutton is all the way down here at – wide receiver 24 so that's kind of where they're where the fantasy consensus experts have them ranked or expert consensus is ranked 
But as far as the sits go, one of my guys that I have on there, and this might help you out a little bit. Let's see. Week one, I said temper your expectations on Justin Herbert. One of the reasons for that was they were going up against Washington's defense, and that worried me a little bit. So one of the guys that's going up against Washington's defense this week is Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. And I know it it's crazy because Josh Allen is one of these quarterbacks. He's normally, in most cases, top five every week. So you don't really want to set him. But if you have better options, you know, if you've got a – let me just look real quick at the quarterbacks and, and see if you've got – obviously, if you have Kyler Murray or Lamar or Mahomes, Russell Wilson, or in your case, Dak, guys like that, it's okay. You can sit Josh Allen and not feel worried about it. But even if you have like a Tom Brady or a Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, um, any of those guys – I would probably still potentially uh, start them ahead of Josh Allen. Okay. Good to know. All right. Well, I've got Josh Allen in, one, in that one league of ours. So I uh, maybe I'll, I'll keep things as they are right now going forward. And, and one thing real quick on Josh Allen too is if you are in the um, – if you are – if you don't have Josh Allen, absolutely – after this week, if he has a bad game, go out and buy this guy because I, I looked at his schedule and I don't have it pulled up now, but his schedule within the next like five to six weeks after week three is like he's almost got a just easy, easy, easy schedule coming up. Yeah, you've got probably I, – I, I would guess Miami's on the docket somewhere in there mm-hmm. and – probably the jets and and things of that nature before we get into maybe a couple of game picks and hopping out of here we've got one question from tim bria hey there i was just sent a trade locket for aj brown should i do it he gets locket is what he uh he gets locket he gets locket for aj brown i think last week aj brown had a rough game uh, some drops and whatnot i think in that one um but good question there from tim yeah, so in most cases, I would say a one-for-one, one, most cases you're not getting going to get good value. So what I like to do is is kind of trade like two lower-level players and try to move up a tier. But in this case, you're going – you're trading away A.J. Brown, who right now is ranked as wide receiver 14, to a Tyler Lockett, who is wide receiver 5. So – if that don't tell you kind of where I'm I'm standing on that, then I don't know. I mean, absolutely. That would be a take that bad boy and <laughs> run with it as fast as you can. Okay. Because and and another thing that, that worries me, and I have Ryan Tannehill in a couple leagues, and you've seen they're leaning heavy, heavy, heavy on Derrick Henry right now. Mm-hmm. And that worries me a little bit. Now maybe they'll start to iron things out a little bit and do a little more play action, but it, it, and it also worries me that they have Julio as well. So you, you won't see them hyper target AJ Brown kind of like they did last year. Yeah. Another one here from Landon. Would you accept this trade? James white for Eli Mitchell. I get Mitchell. So that one's a little more difficult. Obviously, or not, maybe not obviously, but Eli Mitchell is probably the better player. He definitely plays in the better system for running backs, I think, because Kyle Shanahan has an awesome, um, an awesome running back scheme. The only issue is it doesn't matter who he puts back there. So he cycles through running backs so crazy that, I mean, I expect Jacquez to – to potentially get some touches this week. And if he gets, you know, five or six carries and he's running for five yards a carry, they might be like, well, this guy's killing it right now, so let's just stick with him. And then all of a sudden, Eli Mitchell don't get, you know, anything. And then that just kind of ruined ruined your fantasy day. So 
I worry about the San Francisco running back situation. So I'm going to lean towards um, the James White side. Mm, okay. Uh, let's so let's move into some uh, just briefly possible survival picks. Maybe a, if you've got some ideas on some of the lines, we like using this website. No, no advertising here or uh, anything like that. We just like it because it shows a lot of different options between DraftKings, Caesar Sportsbook, FanDuel, BetMGM, and, and mm-hmm. others. Um, I have on my uh, on my survival pick. I, I debated taking Denver over the Jets. I think what I settled on was the Raiders over the Dolphins because Tua being out this week um, and, and just how the Dolphins played without him. Uh, I, I, that's where I lean this week. I don't know if you have ideas. It sounded like you were high on the Broncos this week in general. Um, mm-hmm. and, and or if there are just a couple of games here that stick out to you in terms of lines. Yeah, so the um, obviously my survivor pick for the week was, was Denver. Um, and a couple other ones that I had was uh, the um, – I, I didn't write it down now. Let's, let's scroll down through there a little bit. The Cleveland Browns-Chicago game, that worries me. I think that every, everyone's thinking that Cleveland will run away with that game. I don't necessarily think it will be – and that in case you're – you're looking to bet could possibly be, you know, you, you definitely run with the points in, in, in Chicago there, but, um, you know, Baltimore against Detroit, that's all obviously an easy one if you wanted to go with Baltimore, but if you wanted to wait until they get a little healthier and kind of save them for later on in the stretch run, when they, whenever you worry or when you start to run out of picks, um, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Tennessee is obviously the better team, but Indianapolis, for some reason, every time Tennessee plays against Indy, it seems like they struggle a little bit. So I don't know, and I know we don't know who the quarterback is, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick them as my survivor pick. Um, let's see who else we got here. Chargers against the Chiefs, that's a stay away. Um, Saints and Patriots, I. That one worries me a little bit. Atlanta Falcons and the Giants. That one actually would be a pretty good game to watch. Um, I'm just because I'm kind of not so great teams, but yeah, it should be competitive. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I just because I kind of want to see Daniel Jones has impressed me fantasy wise here lately, and I'm I would be interested to see kind of what is he for real or not. I guess. And then, uh, like I said before, Arizona Cardinals and Jacksonville Jaguars. That one scares me a little bit because I think it might end up being a trap game. Arizona's 2-0, and Jacksonville 0-2. and They might look past it. So that's kind of why I just settled in with the Denver against the New York Jets. And after watching the Jets, their defense actually does not look that bad. But I just – I. I think the Broncos, they're, they're secondary, they're front, everything. That was the team that I said going into the year that Cincinnati would walk all over, and I didn't necessarily have any issues with that. But after watching them for two weeks, I think they look – that one scares me a little bit, especially going into mile high whenever we do. Yeah, that's uh, later in the year. I think it's uh, in December, I think, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. The wife and I were, were planning on going to that game until we realized Mile High in December would probably not be the best that best time be, to go. <laughs> that would be chilly. That would be chilly yeah. for sure. Well, we're going to get on out of here. Uh, Derek, thanks for your knowledge and your time for sharing some fantasy tips this week. Uh, we do want to promote your channel, The Orange Arrow Fantasy Show. I, it is on YouTube. Um, I will put the link in the live chat chats. It is in the description as well for this particular episode. Um, he, we've been doing this since the kickoff of week one, really. And uh, it's been a lot of fun talking with you about this and let us know how frequently you're, you're posting some stuff on there and you've got a lot of fun, fun videos on there. Yeah. So I, I go live every Wednesday. I do my um, starts and sits, sits of the week. And every Friday I do Orange Arrow Locks of the Week where we talk betting and survival and stuff like that. But this week I just released it on uh, 
actually yesterday it was Steelers week and it was actually a little explicit because there's a few choice words that I had for Steelers on there. So mm -hmm. if you want to go and check that out, I, that, I had a lot of fun with that one. But you can find it there or if you'd rather w listen to me, you can find me at the Orange Era Fantasy Show on and you know iTunes, um, what's the Spotify, Google? I think I'm on Google. I can't remember all the places I'm on on that. But you can if you rather not see me and just rather listen to me, which I don't, I don't know which way you would lean on that one. I'm, I kind of think I, I struggle with both of them, <laughs> of those. But you can go over there there on on Apple iTunes and uh, and Spotify and places like that. So. Awesome, and then we'll be uh, hopefully continuing this throughout the the season, giving fantasy football tips uh, weekly for folks going as they look to set their survival picks, their fantasy lineups, all that good stuff. Derek, have a good weekend, man. It's Steelers week. Hopefully our Bengals pull it out. But uh, also hopefully you have a successful fantasy football weekend. I'm due. I am absolutely due for a successful weekend, so uh, I need it. Yeah, I have a, uh, I have a big money league. And it's at the uh, couple or a bunch of buddies that I work with, and I they we we put in um, let's just say we put a substantial amount, and then we do um, a substantial amount for high score on the week, and I <laughs> I am zero and two in that league and in twelfth place right now. So that kind of shows you, <laughs> shows you where I'm sitting on on that All one. Right. So. Wow, we got to hope. So maybe change. you know monkey. Or what is it they say? Monkey see, monkey do, or, or do as I say, not as I do. That yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for everything. Have a good weekend. Thanks to to the live listeners. I uh, hope you enjoyed this show. Have a good weekend. Let's hope those Bengals win, and we will talk to you soon. Absolutely. And real quick, I know um, next week's show we might be doing this live from the tailgating party because next week obviously the Bengals are playing on thursday we'll night so we'll have to figure that I, out <laughs> yeah i will be i will be tailgating so we'll we'll look and see maybe figure something yeah, out maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do it a different time because i don't want to interrupt your tailgating time That's gonna be a game, so. and yeah. there's a small small chance i make my way back out there for that week but it's looking unlikely unfortunately but uh we'll see anyway have a good weekend let's hope those Bengals get a win thanks derek who day bud Absolutely. Who they?